Motionless, he lies on his mother's lap looking severely emaciated. One and a half year old Alinga Dominic's looks can best tell the story of a fight for survival for a Karamajong child. And when he attempts to cry, he's inaudible. He can barely breathe. Without many options, his mother Maria Namongo can barely do much but watch and listen to her child's desperate cry. We found Dominic and his mother at Kabong Hospital where they had come for treatment and relief after being declared malnourished. After minutes of waiting, it is his time for medical checkup and treatment. He weighs 3.2 kilograms, a clear indication that he's underweight. Dominique is one of the 300,000 children who have been hit by malnutrition in Karamoja, a condition that occurs due to deficiency of vital nutrients in one's diet. Some of them have complications of malnutrition like edema, yes. they have anemia, they have malaria. Uh, when they have that, we admit them into the ITC where we, we start them on treatment. According to the UNICEF Nutritional Surveillance Report 2012 for Karamoja region, two out of five children in Karamoja are malnourished, while 40% of these children under the age of five are underweight. The report also puts the severe acute malnutrition prevalence in the region at 3.1%, exceeding the 2% emergency threshold level. Moroto and Napak districts are also reported to be the most affected by the malnutrition. These statistics indeed paint a grim picture of a matter that needs urgent attention. Imagine a child in Karamoja from morning up to evening. There is nothing like breakfast, there is nothing like lunch, there is no supper. A child goes into the wilderness, either looks for fruits, if there is nothing comes back. If there is a residue that remains after brewing, a child eats that and sleeps. So how do you expect such a child to really uh, 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 cope up? with the, 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 the aspects of uh, uh, good nutrition. Yet even the tireless efforts by the Karamajong people who wake up to cultivate these fertile grounds are shattered by the cyclic drought. This makes the puzzle even more difficult to solve unless government intervenes. This one is an indicator that next year, next season, we shall not have food. Even this interim period, we, the many people in Karamoja are going to die. So there must be uh, an immediate intervention in terms of food aid. For starters, what we can do, we have been making several deliveries of fortified foods. These are what we can actually call nutritious foods. We make these deliveries to the districts, and the districts take count of how many hospitals are in the area. Then they are distributed. Non-government organizations, international agencies, and government have over the years camped in the region to heed to the call. But according to government, there is need to find a lasting solution to the problem. Because we have now demonstrated that food production in Karamoja is possible through our tractor hire scheme. They should ensure this one continues. We are phasing out the tractor hire scheme because it's expensive. And uh, what we are now looking at is uh, giving out oxens and ox plows because we want to ensure sustainability of food production in Karamoja. If there was a strategy even to create an irrigation scheme in Karamoja, that this parent may at least utilize, that would also help. But for now, you move around, basically most of the places are dry. If you went to Cotido now, you can't even see what we call a wetland. The future of Dominic and others like him in Karamoja is on the line. If a solution to this life-threatening food insecurity, hunger and malnutrition is not solved. And as the clock turns towards the 2015 Millennium Development Goal deadline, there are fears that Uganda's ability to feed its population could be turning blurry. Solomon Serwanja, NTV.